don't forsake it. Just remember that your life is what you make it. Your life is what you make it. I just wanna live my life, they wanna take it. Live every day like it's your last, and don't forsake it. Just remember that your life is what you make it. Your life is what you make it. Another dead body laying cold in the streets. Tell me when will it stop? When will we increase the peace? Can't even trust the cops. We getting killed by police. Supposed to protect your serve. They pull triggers instantly. The mystery. Tell me where it's all about black leaders. And these baby having babies. So nobody won't teach. Emancipation proclamation. And we still ain't got freedom. Generation got potential. Don't nobody want to lead them. Let them feed us. Come. Tools that they need to defeat us. This corruption, it begins from the womb to the fetus. Mama ain't got no sense. The daddy ain't got no sense. And he ain't making no dollars. So we ain't making no sense. He hit the block and try to hustle. Cause he gotta pay the rent. With no real understanding of how real it can get. My people prepared from a lack of now comprehend the risk. I hear they soul speaking from the grave. It sounds like this. I just wanna live my life. They wanna take it. Live every day like it's your last and don't forsake it. Just remember that your life is what you make it. Your life is what you make it. I just wanna live my life. They wanna take it. Live every day like it's your last and don't forsake it. Just remember that your life is what you make it. Your life is what you make it. Ain't that much love in the world, you dudes gone crazy Now tell me this, who in the world gon' raise your baby? Who? All that selfie thinking plagues a whole generation If she don't wanna be with your bro, then leave her If she don't respect you, take heed, will she make you be Cause let's be honest, some women will call you out your name Just to provoke you, make you crazy, make you go insane If she a thought you catch a teeth, you better let it burn Cause you gon' be ready to kill her when she do it again and you get burned With our young black male, I'm concerned Cause we gon' wipe ourselves out if we don't learn It ain't no Malcolm, ain't no Martin, ain't no Garvey My people hunger for knowledge and we starving It's just too much silence, let's address the issue Cause it's too late when the reaper come and get you I just wanna live my life Government got trillions of dollars, they ain't got the answer Yeah, let them tell it, but they can't fool me cause I know better know. Won't release the cure, they make a killing off medicine I ain't a reverend, but I made this on the priest the truth God put it on my heart, sent me here to reach the youth you Research Dr. Stevie, he had a die with medicine He cured every major disease and he had proof He died mysteriously, and that's the ironic truth If you don't think they took him out, then shorty, you a fool I done lost friends and family to this deadly disease Almost every family in America can relate to me I'm about to bear my uncle tomorrow, man, you feel me? The most serial killer cancer just keeps killing Live your life to the fullest as long as you live And all my people, stop the violence, stop the killing I just wanna live my life, they wanna take it Live every day like it's your last and don't forsake it Just remember that your life is what you make it Your life is what you make it I just wanna live my life, they wanna take it Live every day like it's your last and don't forsake it Just remember that your life is what you make it Your life is what you make it I just wanna live my life, they wanna take it Live every day like it's your last and don't forsake it Just remember that your life is what you make it Your life is what you make it. I just wanna live my life, they wanna take it. Live every day like it's your last and don't forsake it. Symbolizing, reminiscing of how we stop sinning 
So many different occasions, yeah, how we gave deliverance. Yeah, we remember the time, that's how we thanksgiving. We hold the feast of dedication, I know we get Christmas. Need to research what you celebrate, it's paganistic. I'm in the spirit on the holy days, I feel terrific. Only a glass or two of wine, so I don't feel the century. I give a toast on the feast day. Good, drink good, let it replay. We bring it back to the holy days. Babylon, what we celebrate the Lord's day. And, and I go hard for mine, so what you think when the feast is on the couch? And these three things so beautiful, you know I'm with the family Your ways from before became a distant memory Family reunion every week, yeah, this is for the sad How you love her, you don't keep the full command Put down the things you did before, yeah, that's repent We put the fridges on our garments, they can't stand uh, I'm like, who fly to me? Spirit get higher and like your Messiah trying to be I be on power, me to sit by the beat Seven month, ten day, I feel free My favorite feast, tabernacle it's supposed to tend to the wilderness for a week Make sure the odds got a bottle on ice I treat my brothers like myself With no worries for the more Today we live without a kill I praise the most high Let's have a toast Put your drinks in the hell Cause it's a right to give up I toast on the feast day Good drink, good, let it replay We bring it back to the holy day Babylon, what we celebrate the Lord's day I give a toast on the feast day Eat that, we drink, good, let it replay You just want to do what you feel because you're living in the flesh. You got comfort in captivity, but this is not your way. Michael 2 and 10, we ain't adopt European culture. It was pushed on us. This nation ain't under God. They enemies over them. Everything he told us don't do, they making it legal. Killing babies with both birth, man. Abortion is evil. A child is a child, even if it's a fetus. I'm tired of the lies. All they do is mislead us. On my knees, I'm pleading. And a lie. Don't believe them, they deceitful creatures Such as dry like leeches On our ancestors back, they put this wicked nation Ain't no way to make it right, it ain't no justification Hell counsels on our behalf, it's set up indoctrination LBGTQ, I don't care, it's abomination You can't counsel me, cause I don't want the fame I just wanna wake up my people and break the chain You just wanna do what you need So you just wanna do what you do, yeah. Cause you're living in the lust. Just wanna do, just wanna do. You're living in the lust. So you how you gonna say you got faith if you ain't got no work? You gotta flick your flesh. You put the most high first, but you just wanna get drunk and you just wanna buy perks, but you just wanna get high until you rise up. Service is the heart he served. If we keep the commandments, we could break these curses. Listen close to these verses. The scripture immersed in them. Repent from sin. You gotta stop living in them. Them snakes got venom in them. The strike will kill you. That life you're living will leave you defenseless. Wake up, Israel. This might be your last chance. MJ, last hands. You can't come back. Take advantage of the life you were blessed with. Get the most high that attention that your flesh get. I know it feel good, but it's killing ya. Killing. Use the Bible like a mirror, fix your spirit up. You just wanna do what you feel, yeah, yeah. you're living in the lust of the flesh. You wanna do? You're living in the lust of the flesh. You wanna do? So you just wanna do what you feel, yeah, yeah. So you just wanna do what you feel.
Can't tell me nothing by life if you don't know pain. How you gonna try to coach if you don't know the game? You gonna get on the field and pick the wrong place. Instead of seeking help, you wanna do your own thing. When we young, we all feel like we know it all. I was the same way and ended up behind the walls. I lost my grandma and grandpa while I was gone. Didn't get to say my goodbyes, had to remain strong. While I was away, my baby mama gave birth to my daughter. When I needed to be around, I couldn't cause I was locked up. Got out and when I thought things weren't getting no worse, my daughter mama got sick. Started to feel like I was cursed. A few months later, cancer would take her from earth. I took life for granted and ended up getting hurt. Pain. Time is something you can lose and can never get back. Pain. Your brother hit you with pain and you can't hit Come back. On. Can't tell me nothing about life if you don't know pain, pain. Yeah. No, you can't tell me nothing about life if you don't know pain, pain, pain. No pain, no pain. You can't tell me nothing about life if you don't know pain, pain. No, you can't tell me nothing about life if you don't know pain, pain. Unfortunately, my home is stuck my in the streets Got the, street. the phone call by Tracy Long Live DT. DT He got killed on the same block we hustled on He was like my little brother, man, now he gone Last time I saw him, I told him to be careful, be careful. Cause them bricks in them Mobile streets deadly. deadly He just had bought a Camaro and got a good job Trying to be a better man, but his life got raw life got Had one foot in, then get the chance to pull it out get They caught him lacking, then get the chance to pull it out pull it Growing up in the hood, feel like there's no other route If you still in the streets, I pray you make it out Don't get trapped in the trap, it's a setup Satan unleashing the tax, and he won't let up I can't alter your power, but I hope you heed my heads up And no matter what happens, just keep your head up Can't tell me nothing about life if you don't know pain, pain no, you can't tell me nothing about life if you don't know pain, pain, pain. No pain, no, no pain. you can't tell me nothing about life if you don't know pain, pain. No, you can't tell me nothing about life if you don't know pain, pain. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, family. Man, this topic right here is a real important topic. And um, just want to say, just start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who most people call Jesus Christ. Um, and um, so the topic or the title for the lesson is: Are you making sure the ministry is not vain? And you know, the reason I say that this this topic is very important. It's because, you know, you think about uh like uh I know, you know, we all have uh elders that we we looked up to, we came up under, and they tell you about your first impression. Your first impression need to be your best impression because that's how people remember you. Whatever they know from the day that they met you, that's how they remember you. And you basically get stamped with that and labeled with that. And so it's kind of hard to come back from that because you gave people a way to look at you. And, you know, we're all responsible for that. How people look at us, we're responsible for that. Nobody else is. So um, without any further ado, I'll go ahead and get into the lesson. And Brother Daniel's going to be reading today. Brother, if you could go ahead and grab 2 Corinthians 6. And we'll start at verses one through ten. And while he's getting that scripture, you know, if if everyone that's on the live, if you haven't already, if you could go ahead and put a like on the video, go ahead and share the video. And like Brother Aaron said, you can tag your friends with that feature highlight, and it just helps uh, a lot of your friends on your friends list be alerted to what you're tagging them in, and it'll draw attention to the lesson. So um, I'll repeat it for you again, brother, just in case. Uh, second, second Corinthians 6, verses 1 through 10. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. We then, as workers, together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. 
but in all things approving ourselves as the, as the ministers of God in much patience and afflictions and necessities and distresses and stripes and imprisonments and, and, and tumults and labors and watchings and fastings by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as, as chastened and not killed, as sorrow yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Time. And for anybody that just came on, that was Second Corinthians 6, verses 1 through 10. And I'm going to start back at the top. It says, we then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. So when it says that he's beseeching them, he's encouraging them and he's uh, instructing them that we don't receive the grace of God in vain. It says, for he said, if I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation, have I succored thee? Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. And I'm going to read that again. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. So, you know, when you look at verse three, you have to look at it from the standpoint of other people not from the standpoint of your own mind and what you feel is uh, something that can offend someone. You have to look at it from the perspective of other people. What can offend someone? How do they feel about something that I may do? And that's the mind frame we have to have because we don't want people to look at the ministry like the ministry is to blame for something that they deem to be evil or is something that they speak evil of. So we have to be careful, even if it doesn't go against the most high God's commandments. So it says, but in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love and fame, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report as deceivers and yet true. So when you look at these things, focus on verse four, it says, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, distresses so in all things we have to show and prove who we really are regardless so when you look at uh verse eight it says by honor and dishonor by evil report and good report as deceivers and yet true this is showing that there will be things that may be spoken about you that may not necessarily be true but you are in charge of actually showing and proving that that report about you is a bad report and it's an evil report. It's not a report that could be credited to your true nature of your character because your character and your nature will speak for itself when you deal with other people. So it says, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Um, when you look at things like uh, death, when you know someone that doesn't know the truth has to deal with death, we shouldn't behave like someone that don't know the truth when we lose a loved one. Yeah, of course it's gonna hurt you, and you know you're gonna have emotions and feelings that you have to deal with. And I'm just using the you know death of a loved one as an illustration. We know the truth, so we shouldn't be affected in the same nature. That's the same way with any life problems that you may have. Your faith in the most high God and his son who he sent should sustain you and, and give you, you know, without a doubt, a shadow of a doubt, no worry 
no stress because you know he got you because you're walking in his commands so in all these things if we do what verses 4 through 10 tells us we can make sure that the ministry is not blamed and you know we got to understand that you know we have people that have gone before us that have come into this knowledge of the truth that may have offended someone and so what people like to do when you're associated with something or someone or have a likeness to they're going to associate that with all of those people regardless if they know you truly or not that's the way things go so we have to be aware of that and cognizant of that and it's like we coming behind we cleaning this thing up because we got to we got to be you know we got to show good conduct and be what the most high god wants us to be to continue bringing people into this truth um brother if you could grab first corinthians 10 verses 20 through 24. But I say that, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would, I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Ah, the water. So, you know, when people look at verse 23, they say this is evidence of you not having to keep the laws of God. But that's not what the scripture is showing. The scripture says all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Now, this is just talking about the things that aren't explicitly stated in the law that's breaking the law. Because we, we have things like uh, so-called cursing words. And I did a lesson on this a while ago about, you know, going into the etymology of the words to actually realize what these words mean. And in the, the whole, you know, definition of what cursing is, those words are not cursing words, but they're lawful. According to, you know, scripture, when you look at it, it's not in the law to not say those words. And some of those words are actually in the Bible that they call so-called cursing words or profanity. But, you know, the true profane things people do every day like it's nothing. But we have to be aware that although it's lawful, it's not expedient. Why is it not expedient? Because the common view of the world about things such as a curse, so-called cursing word, is that you are uh, sinful or you're wicked or evil for using those words. So the people we're trying to gain, we don't want them to have a view of us that can make the ministry actually not be effective when talking to them and ministering to them. So we have to analyze ourselves and say, is it expedient for me to use that type of language when I'm talking to a person who has no knowledge of the things that I have knowledge of? It's not expedient. So um, it says uh, in verse 24, let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. We already got the truth. We're not seeking our own mind about things. We're seeking everyone else's mind about things because we want to bring people into this truth to the knowledge of the true God, whose name is Yahweh. So we have to be aware. Brother, uh, grab 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. So we're in the same chapter. Uh, so I, you, you said 1 through 5? Time. All right. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of the Messiah, who in presence and base among you, but being absent, and bold toward you but i beseech you that i may not be bold when i am present with that confidence wherewith i think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds 
casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. God, so it says, now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold towards you. That was the reason that Paul, when he was absent, was bold toward the, the people of that church, of those churches he spoke to. It's because he wasn't in their presence and he had to make sure and affirm to them, hey, be be strong, you know, be um long suffering, be encouraged, don't fall by the wayside while I'm away. And when he was among them, he was able to be gentle because they had took that good counsel and they stood steadfast in it. So it says, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. So you know, some people would think that, you know, um, certain things about you and think that you walk according to the flesh when you walk according to the knowledge of the spirit. And this is what Paul was talking about when he had to be bold against those that thought those things. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So. You know, when you think of um, you know, being aware of our character and our conduct so that the ministry is not blamed, this ain't saying be soft. This ain't saying be weak. You still can be mighty, but you got to be aware and you got to use wisdom. The Messiah told us to be as wise as serpents, but as innocent as doves. And this is the counsel that Paul shows throughout his ministry. Is that we have to be careful because we want to win people. We don't want to detour people and make people look at us like we off when we know we are. Um, brother, grab Matthew 18 and we're going to read verses one through seven. At the same time came the disciples unto the Messiah, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? The Messiah called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged, hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offensive come. But woe to the man by whom that offense cometh. Con, con. So in verse 3 it says, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And when you think of a child, when a child comes into this world in its innocence, it has limited knowledge. It's it's open to learning everything. And, you know, the Messiah is saying, unless we become like that child, we won't enter into the kingdom of heaven. And, you know, of course, we did this when we came into the truth. But we still have to continue to humble ourselves, because as we grow in wisdom, there are things we're going to have to change about ourselves because we're still learning, we're still growing. It says, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. So, you know, even when we look at um, our people who are ignorant of the truth in the world, when we're able to humble ourselves, and it's like we're catering to them because this is for them. This this promise that the Most High has given and he sent his son to receive them back into this covenant is for them. We've already taken a hold of it, but we, we got to endure to the end. And a part of enduring into the end and a part of the walk is opening the doors for others so that they can come into this knowledge so we can get the heck up out of Babylon the Great. 
And it says, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. This is showing like you, we got to be careful if we offend some of these that don't have the wisdom or the knowledge that we may have to the point where it turns them away from the truth. And they say, oh, them Hebrew Israelites. Oh, that's what you is. Yeah, yeah. Uh -uh, I don't mess with them. They wicked. If we if we get people to thinking like that and turning away from the truth, we in trouble. It say woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to the man by whom the offense cometh. So the person who actually causes this to happen. It's woe unto you. That's trouble. That's destruction. That's possible death. That's possible no eternal life. So we have to be careful. This is very important. Brother Grab, verses 10 through 14. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountains and seek of that which is gone astray? And if so, and, and if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Ah, so it says, take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. And it's not just saying, oh, like, you know, you despise them and as far as you hate them. But, you know, not being cognizant or aware or considerate of them to make sure that you're doing what, what it takes to try and show these people the truth. It says that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. For the son of man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and go up into the mountains and seek of that which is gone astray? We would be counted as the ninety-nine. And, you know, what's the point of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the ninety-nine when it's other sheep over there that haven't heard that they need to come to the fold. We still got to bring sheep into the fold. That's why we still here right now. So it says, and if, if, if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoices more of that sheep than of the 99, 99, which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. So it's very important. This ministry is very important. Not offending our people is important because those are the ones that we're supposed to minister to. So we got to try to win them, not push them away. Brother, grab James 3, verses 13 through 18. You said 13 through 18? Uh. All right. <clears throat> Who is a wise man and endured and, and, and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversion his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For for where envying and strife is there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, poor, pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Ah. It says, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? So just starting off is saying, who is a wise man and endued with, and endued with knowledge among you? That knowledge and that wisdom is going to cause you to act out in a way where you know 
you're going to have good a good conversation. It says, let him shoe out a good conversation. His works with meekness of wisdom. So being meek, being able to be taught, being able to learn, being able to move with uh, with wisdom and introspect is shown, you know, by your wisdom that you do have. It shows that, you know, by your character and the things you do, you're going to be able to show who you are. It says, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. And we already know, you know, there are people who already have strife against the truth. So we got to be able to show these people that all the stuff that they say, all the bad stuff they say against the truth and against people of the truth, brothers of the truth, sisters of the truth, it ain't true. It's a, a very important thing. It says this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace you know the scriptures say in matthew 5 blessed are the peacemakers we got to always be seeking peace with people when we're going about in our conversations to talk about the goodness of the most high god yahweh and especially to get them to understand that we got to keep these laws and that we got to have faith in the Messiah. You know, if if we're saying, hey, you got to keep the laws of God and we're not exuding the fruits of the spirit, they're going to say them wicked uh, so-called Israelites talking about keeping the law, but they ain't got the fruits of the spirit. I ain't listening to that. That's a false gospel. That's what people going to do. It's automatic. They already looking. They looking to see, you know, some kinks in the armor so that they can demonize it. And that's just a fleshly thing that they're doing because a lot of people feel attacked when we come and tell them, like, no, nah, it's not it's not right. What, what you've been getting taught is not right. I know because I used to learn the same thing. So we have to be careful and we got to be aware of this. You got to remember that one day you were like them. And so you got to think like them. But uh, brother, grab Galatians six. Well, I'm gonna read this where uh, brother Aaron posted. It says, "Your speech should always be pleasant and interesting, and you should know how to give the right answer to everyone." That's Colossians four six in the GNTD. And um, brother, grab uh, Galatians six verses one through three. Good scripture, brother uh, Aaron. The water, brethren. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of the Messiah. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Time. So verse 1 says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We got to be able to rebuke and reprove our brothers. Because if we don't, what you essentially start to do is accept the behavior and say the behavior is okay. It says, you know, for, for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. And we have to be careful of that, you know, thinking that we're so high and mighty that we can't fall or slip through deception. You know, Satan is the master at deception. So we got to always be analyzing ourselves, approving ourselves, showing ourselves to be ministers of God, like the brother Paul stated. Um, Brother, if you could grab Second Timothy chapter 2. Verses 22 to 26. And if you got anything to add, you can add. Um, I do. I, I guess sort of one thing uh, earlier. 
I thought of the scripture, Proverbs 18 and 19. Um, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. And I thought that would kind of go well with what you were talking about. Ah, ah, the beautiful scripture. But um, you said verse 22 to where? Uh, Second Timothy 2, verse 22 through 26. Okay. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men. Um, a point to teach, patient, apt to teach, patient, so I can. And meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, per adventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Uh, um, you know, just to you know, bring it into perspective, there are people who you may come in contact with you may encounter and you may have a conversation and you see where that conversation is headed wisdom is going to tell you to flee from that conversation because you know where it's headed and you know yourself and you know the lust of the flesh and what it can cause you to do having to move with wisdom is a very important thing being being uh cognizant and aware that you're heading into a situation you don't think you should be in it says flee also youthful lusts but follow righteousness faith charity peace with them that call on the lord out of a pure heart when you look at youthful lust you can think of it in the sense of when we were in the world the way we we would react to things that we no longer use that way of reacting to things but also youthful lusts as far as you know being in this truth and growing Everybody knows where they're at as far as how far you got to go, how far you've come, how much more you need to learn, what you need to work on. You know, when you can identify that, that's that's a youthful lust that you're still battling with, you're fighting with. But you got to be able to identify it to be able to correct it. So it says, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. If anything that we have uh, inclination to do goes against these things, we know that they are youthful lusts that we need to correct. It says, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. I can remember having conversations with people of other religious persuasions and, you know, foolish and unlearned questions. They do gender strifes. And out of being, being, you know, in my youthful lust, I would engage those conversations. But I was able to correct it by being honest with myself. That, hey, I should keep myself out of those situations when I see it headed now. I got to do better. And that's just what we have to do. We have to identify and analyze ourselves. It says, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. When you look at verse 24 and it says, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patience. Being able to teach someone is a very, um, you have to have patience to, to teach people. You think about it like in the school system, how you had teachers that uh, would teach the ones with learning disabilities or the special ed. Those teachers were more patient than the regular teachers in the school because it took a different level of patience and understanding. That's the same way with our people. When you know we're in Babylon the Great 
And there's so much propaganda out here for other beliefs that do not line up with the most high God's understanding of the truth in the Bible. You got to be more understanding and more patient, patient with these people, because we were all like that before. And you couldn't tell us we was wrong. We knew and felt what we knew was right. Our grandmama and our mama and dads and granddads taught us what we knew. And we held on to that because our heart was connected to that. So we got to have that understanding when dealing with our people. Um, Brother, grab Proverbs 10 verses 11 through 14. <clears throat> the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Tom, one more verse. Uh, slack, yeah. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of, of the foolish is near destruction. Ah, 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 the water. So it says, he that winketh with the eye causes sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. You, know, you think about when somebody winks with the eye, they doing something sneaky, devilish. And it says the person says he that winketh with the eye causes sorrow because he, 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 he plotting, you know, something that's going to be sneaky and underhanded. It says, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. So like you, it says, but a praying fool shall fall. It says the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirs up strifes, but love covers all sins. Having love for our people keeps us from being stirred up, you know, in strifes. Hatred is what actually does that. But when we love our people in patience and meekness and kindness, it's going to stop us from actually doing this, doing those things. It says, uh, in the lips of him that have understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. When you look at a, a rod, it's for the back of him that is void of understanding. When we don't understand certain things or the provisions that the Most High has made for us, we actually suffer from it. Uh, when you look at something like dietary law, and just eating whatever the heck we want to eat those health conditions they come you know of course we have health conditions in general but when we overindulge in you know eating things or just indulge in eating things we shouldn't eat anyway it actually speeds up the process of our health deteriorating we can't do nothing about aging but we can do something about the rate that we age and we can do something about us heading for destruction. You know, it's um, showing that, you know, if we have understanding, that rod won't be for our back. We won't be disciplined if we have an understanding heart and mind. We'll be seeking the most high and seeking what he has for our life. Um, brother, if you could grab First Timothy 4. Well, Salaki, uh, brother Aaron, you got anything you want to bring out since you came to the stage? Khan, Khan, by the way, Khan, Shalom, Shalom, Akim. Um, yeah, if if you don't mind, um, did so. <clears throat> I know the brother read Titus three, I believe, right? Um, Timothy, it was Second Timothy two. Oh, Second Timothy. Okay, Khan, Khan. So, can you read, um, brother Dan? Can you read Titus three, verses two through three? Just uh, just going back to the um the prior point, talking about um you know we have to be sympathetic because you know some of our people are in conditions that we used to be in before we came to the knowledge of the truth, right? So can you read Titus three verses two through three? To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived serving divers lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Khan, 
con and that just um goes to the to the prior point because you know like we have to have that that empathy you know with our people like you know when, when we see certain certain folk that are just so quote unquote bugged out of their mind you know because christianity are different world philosophies we have to understand that at a particular time we might have believed in certain things you know we might have had certain understandings and so you know we have to walk in a particular manner and exercise the fruit to the holy spirit just as a brother was speaking to and you know and this is actually um you know the way to actually win people to yahweh shah and to the most high all right and just uh one more scripture can you get um psalm i'm sorry not psalm uh proverbs 11 and 30. <clears throat> the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that one of souls is wise right so so the one that went of souls is wise and the way that you win souls is by utilizing the wisdom that yahweh and his apostles taught right you know but um yeah i'll I pass it back to you brother i just wanted to make those points you know it's been a beautiful lesson so far Khan, the water came, the water. And I'm going to read this uh, scripture that you put in the chat. And it's uh, Romans 14, verse 13 in the NLT. So let's stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. And, you know, when you look at this, you know, of course, we don't want our brother, our brethren um, or sisters who are Israelites to stumble and fall. But it says a believer, even if they are of another persuasion of belief, they're still a believer in the Messiah. And we don't want that person to not be able to be receptive to us. We want those people to receive us. They're the ones that we preaching this message for because we love them. And if our conduct can actually win them over, if that's the last line of defense that we got is our conduct, we got to be aware and be careful. Um, brother, uh, if you could grab 1 Timothy 4, verses 12 through 16. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So I come give attendance to reading, to, to ex exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the, pres of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy, pro that, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and into the, the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Ah. So it says, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So, you know, this not despising the youth is actually learning from your youth. You're using your youth to learn and improve. You're analyzing yourself. It says, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. presbytery. So it says, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. So, you know, that's something that has to continue. We continue to give attention to you know, everything that we're doing, you know, the things we're taking in, the doctrine that we have, making sure that we're correct, making sure that we're living and standing upright so that the Most High is pleased with us. Verse 15 says, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this, thou, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. 
So your conduct alone can actually save somebody and save yourself. So this is very important. Um, Brother Graf, 1 Peter 3, verses 1 through 4. And then I have one more scripture at that, after that. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your, your, ch your chaste conversation, coupled with fear, whose who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing gold and of putting on of apparel. Be let it, but let it be hidden, be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Ah, so this advice given it, it starts off it says likewise ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the word now this second part it doesn't just apply to the wives it says that if any obey not the word that they also may without the word be warned by the conversation of the wives but that's by the conversation of the men also the husbands also our conversation can win people over our conduct can win people over. When people see that you got love for your people in the way that you speak or the way that you conduct yourself toward them, that can win people over. That's an attractive thing. It doesn't detract. It says, while they behold your chest conversation coupled with fear, who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. Don't let it just be because you got fringes on that you keep it at commandment for wearing fringes, that you think that you can get by with doing this and doing that. We still got to tend to the spirit, tend to the heart. It says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So just as important, you know, us keeping the laws of God, the things that you can see on the outside that we got our beard, we ain't, we ain't cutting into it. We ain't, you know, we wearing the fringes. We ain't wearing mixed fabrics. The spiritual things are just as important. We can't neglect them. Uh, brother, grab this uh, final scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 13. Oh, I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. I am become a surrounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind, Charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. But we know in part, and we prophesy, if we prophesy in part, but we, but when that which is perfect is come, and th then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abide of faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Time, time. And, you know, to sum it up is, you know, we, of all things, we just need to have love. Love is what's going to protect us. and 
you know, keep us from making sure that the ministry is not blamed. Love is what's going to help draw people to this truth and help convert souls. Love is going to keep us from being um, free from guilt. It's going to help, I mean, help keep us free from guilt. You know, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I felt like that was the, the best scripture to actually end the lesson with. And uh, the water, brother Daniel, for the reading. And uh, if you brothers got anything y'all want to add, we can get into those scriptures also. Kanye, I, I don't have anything to add myself. Um, definitely a beautiful lesson. And, um, you know, all praise to the Most High and, and the water for, for your service, bro. Um, I, I enjoyed the lesson. Um, I, I don't have anything else to add either. Con, con. Well, the water, the water, all praise to the Most High, man, and uh, everybody that uh, joined, I mean, that uh, was in the comments and that has liked and shared the video, the water to y'all. And if you're watching the replay, make sure you like, share the video, and also comment. Let us know you was here. And uh, just want to end by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, high God in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai. And uh, brother, if you could, you can go ahead and uh, close it out with a scripture. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to close out with Numbers 6. Number 6. Verse 24, starting at verse 24. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. They shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. All praises. Time, all praises. Shalom, 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 family. Shalom. You just want to do what you feel because you're living in the flesh. You got comfort in captivity, but this is not your rest. Michael 2 and 10, we ain't adopt European culture. It was pushed on us. This nation ain't under God. They enemies are winning. Everything he told us don't do, they making it legal. Killing babies with both birth, man. Abortion is evil. A child is a child, even if it's a fetus. Some tired of the lies. All they do is mislead us. On my knees, I'm pleading. And a lot don't believe them. They deceitful creature, such as dry like leeches. On our ancestors, back they built this wicked nation. Ain't no way to make it right, it ain't no justification. Hell councils on our behalf to set up indoctrination. LBGTQ, I don't care, it's abomination. You can't counsel me, cause I don't want the fame. I just wanna wake up my people and break the chain. You just wanna do what you feel, yeah. So you just wanna do what you feel, yeah. Cause you're living in the lust. Just wanna do what you wanna do. You're living in the lust. You just wanna do. So how you gonna say you got faith when you ain't got no words? Gotta flick your flesh. You put the most high first, but you just wanna get drunk and you just wanna buy perfect, but you just wanna get high until you rise up. This is the heart he served. If we keep the commandments, we can break these curses. Listen close to these verses. The scripture immersed in them. Repent from sin. You gotta stop living in them. Them snakes got venom in them. The strike will kill you. That life you're living will leave you defenseless. Wake up, Israel. This might be your last chance. MJ, last dance. You can't come back. Take advantage of the life you were blessed with. Get the most high that attention that your flesh get. I know it feel good, but it's killing ya. Killing. Use the Bible like a mirror, fix your spirit up. You just wanna do what you feel, yeah, yeah. Cause you're living in the 